Today we'll be going to World War II era Japan into the life of a midwife who murdered up to 169 babies for profit, the demon midwife. Hey, it's Geneva and welcome to Mystery Digest, where every Sunday I cover true crime cases, paranormal cases, and other mystery-related content. On this Sunday's episode, we'll be going to World War II era Japan to a hospital where one midwife, Miyuki Ishikawa, who will come to be known as the demon midwife, decided she was going to help the rising birth rate caused by the end of World War II by killing children. And not only that, but charging parents hefty fines for her services. We'll be looking deeper into the operations, her murders, the motivations, her capture, and the morality of it all. In 1945, Japan was forced to sign an unconditional surrender to end World War II. The country had suffered a terrible socio-economic crisis due to the traumatic consequences of being in war. They had to deal with the destruction of the atomic bomb and the casualties, as well as the economic climate that they were living in at the time. Besides the fact that most of Japan's population were living in one of the worst periods of misery and poverty, they experienced a massive baby boom. Japan produced 2.6 million babies in just three years that is a lot of kids that's that's 2.6 mil bro not much is known about Miyuki's early life all we know is that she was born in 1897 in Miyakaze Japan she studied and graduated from University of Tokyo got married to her husband Takishi Ishikawa and during their marriage they didn't produce any children after leaving college, she started working at Kotobuki Maternity Hospital as a midwife, but was soon promoted to become the hospital's director. She did not need that much power. Look what she did with it. Look what she... <sighs> Miyuki saw the incredible rise in birth rate in her country, and it was especially evident in the maternity hospital she was working at. She saw how many parents were worrying about how they were going to afford another baby how they're going to afford to feed the child make sure that they grow up healthy especially since they were in a less than ideal situation the severity of their problems were really intense leaving families in difficult situations another thing that was working in the population's favor is the fact that doing anything to try and prevent getting pregnant was punishable by law abortions were illegal and the adoption process was less than ideal Making the situation more dire, maternity hospitals at the time were hugely underfunded and regular hospitals were prioritized because of the war. So they were pretty much running off handouts and those handouts could not match up to the amount of babies they were delivering. And Miyuki's solution, she coldly calculated that the only option that she saw available and fit was to kill newborns. And she had all of this already justified in her head. In her mind, she was saving the kids from starvation, illnesses, and an all-around hard life. But this really is questionable, especially when you find out how she killed the children. Her method of murder was starvation and neglect. She wouldn't feed the kids. She wouldn't take care of the kids. She'd just leave the kids there to starve, get sick, and die save them my ass look it's more than okay to see someone in need and think about all the ways that you can you know help them and do it but if at any point at all the one thought running through your head is let me kill this kid you know <coughs> stop leave the building and don't return after murdering a few groups of children, she started charging hefty fines for her services. She'd go to parents after they've given birth and tell them that she has the solution to their problems. She'd tell parents that the cost of her procedure was a lot cheaper than the amount of money they'd have to spend to make sure that the child grows into adulthood. And she'd use that as a means of persuasion. Another questionable thing about this entire situation is the fact that what she was doing, she wasn't exactly doing it in private. It was a secret, but it was a well-known one. But yet still, no one went to the authorities to report what she was doing. Midwives would condemn her and leave their job 
but not report her to the authorities. A while later, she decided that she was going to expand her business. She recruited her husband and another doctor to take some of the work off her hands. Her husband was responsible for collecting the fines. She was responsible for killing the children. And another doctor, Dr. Nakayama, was responsible for making fake birth certificates. And so throughout 1944 to 1948, she went on to kill what's estimated to be 108 to 169 babies, making her Japan's most prolific serial killer. On January 12, 1949, two police officers found the remains of five newborn babies. After doing the autopsy, it was revealed that they didn't die of natural causes, and they started an investigation. Through witnesses and declarations, the police were pointed in Miyuki and her husband's direction. She was found with six babies in her care. All of them developed bronchitis or pneumonia following that. After their interrogation and the wait for their trial, the investigation brought the detectives to a temple where they found 30 dead bodies buried, belonging to babies, of course. Then the investigation brought them to a mortician's house where they found over 40 dead babies. And the thing that tied everything together, aside from the witness reports, was the fact that all the babies died in the same way. Miyuki declared in trial that she had nothing to do with the death of all these children. And the most likely explanation was that the parents actually abandoned their children because of the economic situation that they were in. But we all know that's only half the truth. If nothing I've said before pissed you off, this is about to take the cake. Miyuki and her husband were tried and sentenced to eight and four years. Don't worry, it gets worse. After their appeal, their time was cut into half. Miyuki got four years and her husband got two. For killing over a hundred kids. For murdering over a hundred babies. For murdering over a hundred newborns. After Miyuki spent her four years in jail, she was pretty much a ghost. No one knows what happened after. We don't know if she had kids. We don't know when she died. There's no record of her after she left. Interesting fact to leave you with, the whole demon midwife situation was one of the reasons the Japanese government started considering legalizing abortions. So what do you guys think about the whole demon midwife situation? Do you think four years was enough? How many years do you think she should have spent behind bars? Or were you just thinking? Electric chair. Here endeth a portion of my unholy word. We end it by saying, don't murder people. Especially if they're newborns, because they're small and they're cute. And they can't defend themselves. That's mean.